Well, I was born into it. My mother belonged to it, to St. Stephen's Church. My grandmother belonged to the church. My great-grandmother and father belonged to St. Stephen's Church. Standing in the heart of Cape Town, we hear the hum of daily traffic and people making their way through crowded streets. But in Rubik Square, a quiet atmosphere looms. In the shadows, we can see an orange, sun-washed church, almost completely surrounded by restaurants and parked cars. At first glance, you may not give the church a second look. You wouldn't say that this church holds a deep history stretching back to the emancipation of the enslaved people at the Cape. But in talking to Auntie Rosalind, a lifelong member of this congregation, this quiet atmosphere that we once felt is immediately replaced with her vibrance. St. Stephen's Church was a theater. It was a theater. And then something went wrong and the theater was closed for a couple of years. Then the, free, the slaves were freed and the minister, two ministers, one of the uh, um, Scottish Church and, a, and another uh, minister decided to um, turn us for the slaves, to open a church for the slaves. Mm -hmm. And this building was now, op uh, was, was now standing empty. Mm -hmm. So the two of them decided to buy the church, okay. to buy the, the yes, building yes. rather, to, mm -hmm. buy, to, uh, to minister to the slaves. And it was a school also at the bottom of the church. Mm -hmm. And But the one minister, because he was Scottish, I'll show you later the old pamphlet bookie, he decided to give the church a name, St. Stephen's, because he was now Scottish. But now because St. Stephen's was now a slave church, they didn't belong to any synod. You know what I mean? And they needed to belong somewhere, because they were now isolated. Mm -hmm. They didn't belong to the English, the, the Dutch Reformed Dungas, and they didn't belong to the uh, Anglican section. And then, and, and they were also taught the slave children at the bottom in the schoolroom. You know, they, they came to come and learn to rap. And then the slave, uh, owners of the slaves weren't happy with it and they stoned the church. So that is where St. Stephen came in. Mm. So the Scottish minister gave the name St. Stephen's, but the English version. But when they decided, okay, we want to join some synod, they then approached the NG Senate because they were obviously in control in the Western Cape, in mm. Cape Town, and they were the biggest. And their stipulation was, we would like to join you, but they retain our name. Not to be changed to the Afrikaans version, mm. to be retained. So St. Stephen's is a Dutch Reformed church with an English name. Mm. So obviously our congregation started off with slaves, but then some of the, uh, at this one, Dominic Stegman, he was from the L Lutheran church. And then he ministered at St. Stephen's and this other Scottish minister, I can't remember his name. But some of his members also came over from the Lutheran church. Sure. And you know what is so unique about St. Stephen's? Because we go down like a family church, man, because you can go back and trace your lineage. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Auntie Rosalind did in fact trace her family's lineage in the church's records. After some searching, she found records for both her grandmother and her grandfather's side of the family, going back four generations. I've got records where um, my grandmother's grandfather and grandmother got married at St. Stephen's mm -hmm. in 1855. Sure. That's from my, my, my grandmother's side. Yeah. From my grandfather's side, I've got records where his great-grandparents is also, I don't know if they got married in St. Stephen's, because St. Stephen's only became a church in 1845, after the, uh, the slaves were Free. freed. You know what I mean? As the community historian of St. Stephen's Church, Auntie Rosalind could give us a detailed history of the church, with dates and names and all. But Auntie Rosalind also spoke of a feeling towards the church, a feeling shared throughout the congregation and across generations of families. In the past, St. Stephen's Church was a church for freed enslaved people and a school for their children. 
Today, it houses this legacy. But it also speaks to the personal legacies of countless families like Auntie Rosalind's. We, we are descendants of the slaves, you know what I mean. Okay. And, and, and it started off there. And I feel uh, that our forebearers worked to build up the church to what it is. Mm. You understand? And that's why we have that closeness with the church. You know what I mean? And, and it's a family church, as I said. You know, the, somehow everybody is sort of related to each other. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And most of them came from what they call Bukab. And we spread over the whole of Peninsula. Mm. But our members did eventually, as they moved out, then went for churches nearest to them. But the core of it is still there. Yeah. You know what I mean? The yeah. core of it. Some people, like a friend down the road, Linda, her grandparents and all, and then she went to different churches. And eventually she came back. You know what I mean? Mm. Because your core is there, man. You know what I mean? I don't know. I can't explain to you mm. uh, uh, the feeling we have for our church. The moment we walk into our church in this historical, it's now a historical monument, eh? Yeah. We walk into this historical building and we can tell you the, the, the story about it. You know, it's not just the building. It's the congregation. You yes. know what I mean? Yes, yes. It's the history that. behind it. And the pride of it. Yeah. That is what it is. Innovation. The pride of it. You know what I'm mean? that we were part of something. And 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 we went through I mean the church became a church in 1843. It survived everything that went through, even apartheid, even the uh, district six removal, it survived. It's it was still there. It survived, my dear. It survived. I'm Lisa Hendricks, and you're listening to another episode in the District 6 Museum Vusalela Onslaiser series. Next week, we go with Abba Price as she visits her family home, 53 years after being forcefully removed to Grassy Park. No matter where we are, we are here. The audio snippets used in this podcast are taken from the District 6 Museum archive. The stories produced through this podcast series and the opinions and statements that may be contained in do not reflect those of the District 6 Museum, but rather the individuals hosted within this series. This program is funded by the Mellon Foundation.